Save Wan Chali Arm, they demand. This was June 2020, days after Wan Chali Arm sat Saxit, a pro-democracy blogger was abducted in Cambodia. CCTV footage captured two men stopped in their tracks as they reportedly watched Wan Chali Arm being bundled into an SUV. He was targeted one day after uploading this video mocking Thailand's Prime Minister. He has not been seen since. His the ninth such case of a Thai exile disappearing since 2016. If Wan Chali Arm is dead, we want his body brought back to Thailand. In the past year, Thailand's military has reacted with an iron fist to a growing youth movement calling for democratic reforms. Rounding up dozens of activists under strict laws that forbid any criticism of the monarchy. Last month, the architects of the uprising began filling up courts, their resolve undiminished. They can lock me up, but they cannot lock up the truth. The truth is always the truth, whether in prison, under torture or awaiting execution. The truth is the truth. Other organisers face 15 years in prison if found guilty of sedition and insulting the monarchy. But protest leaders say the campaign cannot be crushed. In the end, no matter how many of us go to jail, there will still be people outside that are still fighting. In the meantime, the families carry the burden, either of not knowing where their loved ones are or facing years of separation. Joining us is rights activist Pim Sri Pichnam Rob in Bangkok. She's been the subject of an ongoing investigation connected to her participation in a protest last summer, and she faces possible jail time for that. Pim Sri, where do things stand in Thailand's democracy movement? Right now, it's kind of difficult because, I mean, things got stagnated. I mean, of course, because of a COVID-19 situation as well, uh, the second outbreak happened last year in December, and after that, it was pretty difficult for the movement to gain momentum the way it had. And many leaders are in detention, in pretrial detention, uh, in relation to the protest last year. So, I mean, it's difficult time for everyone, but we cannot do much. It's just that we just have to keep uh, fighting the way through and then maybe thinking about different ways of uh, protest instead of going out and then taking the street like what we did last year because it's now almost impossible. I want to talk about your case. What are you being accused of and what did you do that you believe was within your right? Well, basically, I gave the, okay, talking about the less majesty, which is the heaviest charge that, I mean, I'm facing. So I gave the speech in the protest last year, uh, in 30th of November, in front of the 11 military infantry. So basically, I just called for the reform or the repeal of the less majesty law, which is the law of insulting monarchy. And I actually didn't talk about uh, the figure himself or anyone in his family. So basically, I just quoted what uh, the former UN Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, David Kay, talked about the law in 2017. So he talked about the cases in Thailand, and then he said, there's no places uh, for less majesty in democratic countries. So I quoted that sentence in Thai, and that appeared in my uh, complaint paper that the police showed me on the 21st of uh, December when I reported myself. So in this part, I think it's super strange, basically, because I didn't talk about uh, uh, the king, the queen, or the heir, or the regent themselves. So it's just calling for the repeal or the amendment of the law. 
and just quoting someone else. Now, you talked about the pandemic slowing things down a bit and the fact that leaders have also been arrested. The government has been immovable in the face of mass demonstrations in your country. What do you think it will take for the political system to change? I mean, first of all, uh, it's important for uh, the re. Okay, last year, I mean, if you follow the demonstrations demands or the protester demands, there are three things. So the first thing is resignation of the prime minister. The second thing is redraft of the constitution. And the third thing is reform of the monarchy. And I mean, of course, these three things have to go along together. And But what to take? for the change in the political system, of course, is the redraft of the constitution at this point because basically the country cannot really move forward with the constitution we are using right now. Uh, right. There are too many dead laws in the constitution. And the upper house would be, I mean, I'm sure you know about it already, but this is uh, this is the main thing that the upper house that have been elected, uh, no, sorry, uh, appointed by the military government would have basically uh, the right to vote for the prime minister. So it means you can win elections many times you want, but the upper house will share the result of the elections anyway. So this is the thing. Election reform. Pimsri Pechnam Rob, thank you so much for joining us.